Michael. I'm Michael Chambarty Woodhead, and I'm from Bank Robber Gallery in Notting Hill Gate in London. One of the three uh, galleries um, and dealers that, that's associated with this show. I mean, this particular event was just crying out to happen because he never has been shown in New York. It's, it's a really great space for it because it's a kind of it's almost like a little Dickensian house. It's ramshackle, but it's perfect for the show. It's you know it's not a, it's not a big white wall sort of Fifth Avenue gallery. It's um, somewhere where where the work um, can live in a slightly more chaotic and and. Uh, suitable way I guess. It's, a, pre it's, it's um, a pretty complete collection of his earliest prints dating from sort of 2000, 2001, 2002 but they go right up until the LA show called Barely Legal which was um, within the last year and include uh, images such as the grannies, trolley hunters which is not up here, Queen Vic sitting regally with her scepter on, on another girl's face um, is one of the early prints. Now that's one of the prints that is really very hard to find because it's, uh, it's an early one, um, it's, it's not a particularly huge edition and it's a very popular one. Uh, this is an original piece um, on, on plaster. Um, so that's one of possibly 15 original pieces in the show and the rest of them are limited edition prints. This, this, piece, this piece here is Kate Moss and it was produced in, with that pale blue background as that was the first in the series. That one hence has a provenance and it costs more than the other ones. It sells particularly well because it plays into the Warhol market which the art world sort of understands, I suppose, and so, and also the soup cans obviously um, play into that same sort of that same sort of thing. I mean, there's sort of a comment on it in a way. The Walmart of the, <laughs> of the English sort of um, supermarket scene. That's lovely. I love that. Don't you? Everybody likes this one. It's an, it's an easy picture. We started to get involved with Banksy. We had a very large and, and, and seminal piece which was taken from a store on the Tottenham Court Road and it blew up into a, a big media thing because the Evening Standard in London valued it at half a million which was unheard of at that time. I think the selection is largely dependent on what, what's available because it's very hard to find anything now. Um, everything is owned. I mean there isn't anything that you can get you know, from, from the source. So it, it's some things are harder than others to find. Original pieces are incredibly difficult to find. Um, and when, when, when they do become available, people have read in the papers that they're worth half a million and want half a million. So it just becomes unrealistic. You know, he's, a bit, he's a phenomenon. He's very foot, uh, was here earlier, it's not. The rude policeman, with a policeman um, putting his finger up, um, which you'll see downstairs, was his first ever print. And the um, people, for instance, the, the, somebody came into the gallery one day and said, I am the rude policeman, and he was the model for that. And very often people, Banksy is, I think, quite generous. And so every now and again, you know, pieces come up that were given specifically by Banksy to people or done for them in, you know, in thanks or something. And so those pieces, those people obviously know who he is at some level, but we don't. No, we don't deal with Banksy. Banksy sort of goes incognito. Nobody, nobody apart from you know, obviously his mum, um, knows who he is. Basically, never met him, but of course I may have, and uh, don't know. Um, maybe I'm Banksy. Maybe you, you're Banksy. I mean, there really is no way of knowing. He has made. He has genuinely managed to maintain that complete sort of. He, he's just hidden from view. He's never. He's never photographed, and he's never interviewed. Well, I don't know if I don't know if the this, this story is true, but. Um, there is a sort of um, street story that he was doing graffiti in what you might think of as a more um, traditional graffiti way with um, spray cans, um, much like on the New York subway in, in the 70s. And he was hiding from the police under a, under a van and he looked up and saw some stenciling and thought that was a way to go because if he created stencils, um, he could be in and out of a situation that you have to remember, of course, is illegal uh, much more quickly because you can take the stencil in, spray it, and he's gone, as opposed to having to be there for a long period of time. So from a purely practical evasion of the law method, um, the, the stenciling idea came through. Now that was, 
not necessarily completely unique, but certainly to him at that time it was unique. And you can see that he uses the stenciling method for as his sort of signature. He did some work on um, copy oil paintings of well-known paintings by Constable and, and, and various other things, and he did a he did a sort of um, pastiche Van Gogh sunflowers picture, for instance, and things. And I think probably one of the other things that really does um, separate him from uh, from a lot of graffiti is the fact that he can really draw. I mean, you know, his he can draw hands and faces and gestures and stuff like that really skillfully. Although the message in a lot of his pictures is, is um, actually sticking the knife in between your ribs and twisting it, he does it in a way that's that's light and you know, people sort of love it. There's a serious message but there's there's a sense in which there's humour as well. I, I suppose there aren't very many people that do deal in Banksy because it's a very, it's a very, it's a very new thing and um, it's probably taken the what you might call, call the old art world, art market, by surprise. So not a lot of people know a lot about Banksy. Um, he's just happened and it's sort of a very explosive thing at this time. One of the big things, if you're interested in buying a Banksy, is whether or not it's signed. Because if the edition, uh, the edition might be up to 750, 500 or 750, but he will only have ever signed between 50 and 150. So the signed ones are very rare. So you can get an unsigned one for upwards of two and a half to five grand, but a signed one wouldn't be less than twelve and a half to fifteen grand, and could go up to seventy-five grand in the case of you know, something like a Kate, one of the Kate Moss pictures. His reputation is growing worldwide. I mean, he's he's been in all the major auction houses now, and achieved very very high prices at Sotheby's, high prices at Christie's, Phillips, etc. Well, we put we put a bit in front of the of the um, the Tate Modern, and um, they they tend to sort of work through committees. And by the time if they if they did in fact decide they were interested, by the time they came through, um, the piece was long sold.